the army and the police have just moved in, violently putting down some of these protesters, beating them. I saw a lot of blood, people being arrested. They grabbed me and let me go, demanding the tape. They're really clamping down hard now, all the people trying to disperse. But I saw some very tough beatings going on. It started as a protest over fuel subsidies. It became a popular uprising against the generals and their policy of oppression. Throughout Myanmar, hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets calling for freedom and democracy. Such gatherings hadn't been seen here for nearly 20 years. The focal point was the former capital, Yangon. At one stage, 100,000 people demonstrated here, and their leaders were the monks, men of peace. They became the rallying point for a nation, worshipped and followed. My name is Tony Berkeley, and I was one of the few journalists in Yangon to witness the uprising and the brutal crackdown by the military. The world was moved by scenes like these, but being down there on the streets, among the thousands, you could see the spirit and feel the exhilaration of ordinary people who believed they could throw off the yoke of military rule. Will you get democracy? Democracy. The soldier, I am trying to kill the many people. No democracy here. No democracy. No democracy. No democracy. No democracy. No democracy. No democracy. We want democracy. Very, very dangerous government. They all understand me. They all alive. They were shooting here before. Yeah, yeah. Anyone, anyone hurt? Anyone hurt? The is going here, they're moving forward inch by inch and they seem to be testing the military. They're standing over there with their guns ready. Does anyone guess what's going to happen? This is the second group of monks moving along. The first lot were dispersed by the army. Now they're going to confront the military in the section by the Sule Pagoda, one of the second most important Buddhist symbols in Yangon. This is in direct defiance of the military. Now we'll see what will happen. For a little while, nothing happened. The ranks of the protesters swelled. They became bolder. But it wasn't to last. All these people are in total, total open defiance of what the military have said. Not banning more than five people from gathering at any one place. Now the army and the riot police are lining up. They're now announcing for the people to disperse or they will move in. It seems as if the start of the crackdown is now beginning. The government declared already the all the rule. More than three percent, five percent cannot stay all together. So now they they say within ten minutes. Would they come in and go back or go back home? Well, what will they do? Just, just, they, 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 they see. They didn't say. Yeah. Ten minutes. Good, ten minutes. Later, ten minutes.
In 1988, the military killed more than 3,000 pro-democracy demonstrators. That hadn't been forgotten, and it wasn't long before shots were being fired. The monks are now on a head-on course for confrontation with the military. They've been warned that gatherings of more than five people will be not tolerated. They're heading directly now to the Sulaim Pagoda, where the military have a bang. I can hear gunfire going off now. The excitement is rising. It's cheering. Machine gun is being fired now. Army and police fire tear gas, rubber bullets and live rounds. In the shadow of the Schwedegen Pagoda, the monks gathered, as it turned out, for one last time. They had megaphones to shout out their message for peace and calm. They were faced by soldiers with raised rifles and bayonets. It was monks who tried to keep a tense situation calm. monks who begged the police and soldiers for restraint. Normally, Buddhists go on their knees before monks. There was no pretense of respect any longer. Some of these scenes have never been aired before. It shows how ruthless the security forces were. Myanmar's foreign minister had told the UN Security Council that police and army exercised restraint. These scenes prove otherwise. Incredibly, some monks fought back. Others escaped during the confusion. Security forces responded with tear gas. Clashes broke out all over the city. Volleys of shots were fired around us and over our heads. Hey, 
Army rapid response units made lightning swoops. Well, running, the army's coming. I think we'll start firing in a minute, I think. We're ready now. They've been singing for a while. The head sign saying, free our monks. Well, the troops are running in very fast. Maybe they've stopped. Here, I filmed while I walked through the middle of the soldiers as they beat and arrested civilians. I kept on walking, but eventually I was grabbed and hauled back. In the confusion, I managed to get away with my camera. At the height of the crackdown, something like 15,000 troops and riot police are estimated to have been on the streets. The government has admitted they killed 10 people, including a Japanese photographer. Observers believe far more died, but it is impossible to say for sure. I really don't know where all this is heading to. I've just witnessed the arrest of about eight or nine young men who were trying to confront the army. The army ra rapidly responded, arrest them, cut them off, beat them a little bit, and then were taking their documentation. I saw them parading through the streets. I was trying to film, not very successfully, because if they see you filming, they're going to take your camera. And I'm very aware of what happened to the Japanese photographer, so it's a bit a bit risky, so you feel, film everything from a distance, very surreptitiously. People here are living a drama every single day of their lives, and they've got front row seats, they turn out in their balconies, and when I was filming sneakily, they're all looking at me and smiling, pointing their fingers, sticking their thumbs in the air. What does it mean? I don't know, it seems that they may be losing the battle, but I'm not sure. Maybe there's a sting in the tail.